And we're back to another series of Let's Play. I'm your host, the RPG Guy. And uh, yeah, the adventures of King Graham continues. We've got our work cut out for us as the adventures are going to get bigger, grand, more grandiose, and definitely a little bit more goofy. And I can't wait to share that experience with you guys. For we have just recently done King's Quest 1, Quest for the Crown. We will now be jumping into the next King's Quest story, King's Quest 2, Romancing the Stones. The direct canon sequel to the first King's Quest game. Uh, and this is a remake done by the Wonderful People at ADG, uh, what is it? ADG uh, Interactive. And definitely one of the, definitely a larger game than the first one. And I do want to let people know who are familiar with King's Quest II, Romancing the Stones from the 80s. They've added some more story to the to King's Quest II to better connect all the King's Quest games together and whatnot, and, in a sense. But it's still, it is the, it is still a wonderful game. Again, best way to play today is this way. But let's go ahead and get started with everybody's favorite part, or not favorite, depending on how long it is. Let's get it on with the introduction. I'm your host, the RPG Guy, and we will now be doing our Let's Play of King's Quest II, Romancing the Stones. And no, it has nothing to do with about turning magic stones into anal beads. Let's get started. Come on, you guys knew I was going to ruin it some way, shape, or form. <laughs> Many argue this is one of their best remakes, too, of the King, of the the out of the three King's Quest games, so I am, I am excited for it. I was I was very much impressed when they first made it back back in the day. So much bigger world. It's not a it's not a cycle a cyclical map. It's not like you could walk from one screen and just keep like regenerating the land and stuff. This is a fixed map, fixed locations, uh, fixed events. Uh, a lot and the way they remade this is much more in in lieu of like King's Quest Five. Again, to me, which is one of the best King's Quest games out there. As goofy as it is. <laughs> oh, the memories. The memories indeed. And this came out in about two, 2010. Um, and uh, I think it holds up. Again, uh, parking back to the original OG point and click adventures of the day. Oh, but our serpent friend's missing. Where's Mr. Scaly Snurp? Miss him already. Open says the instead of open says me. Your Majesty. Ugh. It's a crib keeper. Uh, King Graham. Oh, uh, yes, Minister. Um... Gervain, sire. Of course. My apologies, Gervain. Not necessary, your majesty. After all, I've been your security and defense minister for but a short while. Yes. Where did you say you were from again? Just some small insignificant land to the far south. Pales greatly in comparison to your realm, my lord. Ah, do you have something to report? As a matter of fact, my liege, there's a small concern regarding the duty shifts of some of the castle guards and of the countryside patrols. Also, we are expecting our armed entourage from our nearest neighbor to return within the week. And there is the matter of an alliance with... My liege? My apologies again, Minister Gervain. Please, continue. You bore me to yes. death, Minister. As I was Literal saying, death. There is the matter of an alliance with Usperia. They have become a strong nation now, and it may be prudent to show our willingness to support them, lest they decide we are more of a hindrance than a help. Does the King Bear have any daughters who've come of age? Uh, I do not believe so, sire. As for the security arrangements mm. for the Royal Ball held last week, I do believe the evening went by very smoothly. I dare say just about every princess in this region attended, and not one lost slipper, to coin a phrase. Ugh, please, do not remind that me. That was a knee slapper, Indeed, wasn't it? They were none too fetching. Would you like me to go over your plans for today, my lord? Very well. 
Hmm? Oh, forgive me once again. I am afraid that my mind wanders much these days. I wonder if my predecessor experienced times like these. No doubt. Though I did not know King Edward the Benevolent personally, I understand he was a happy and astute man during his married life, before his wife passed away, that is. Mm. If I may be so bold, perhaps my lord is feeling that certain rooms in his castle are somewhat sparsely filled. The throne room, for example. How and dare you question the royal boner? I mean, uh, 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 the royal like demeanor of this court. And your bed chambers. Ah! Yeah, I, I get you, Graham. How dare he? <laughs> Perhaps. But I do fear I've met no such candidates that would fill the rooms you have mentioned. You should not lose heart, your majesty. If you pause to reflect for but a moment, you may see clearly what is hidden to others. So, if you were wondering, yes, this is going to be very much uh, a quest in filling the homes of this castle. But I won't say much yet. We still got a little more insight, not just to look into the future, but to look into ourselves. Oh, God, Graham! You gaze into the mirror. The minister's words seem to echo in your head. If you pause to reflect for but a moment. Why does he look Not like a creepy David Hasselhoff? Jesus Christ. For many weeks now, you've been reflecting over the direction your life has taken. While Daventry has prospered under your wise leadership, so far your existence has been a dreadfully lonely one. His only friend is Wait, his butt chin. The mirror is changing. As you watch, you begin to see a series of images. Porn? Though you struggle to fathom their meaning. Porn? I mean, Graham's got to be feeling something. The landscape. It is Kalima, a land not far from Daventry. Mm. You don't say. Holy shit! Oh man, it's more more three D than this rig can handle. No, I'm just kidding. No lemons. I mean, you got to give it a break for for a free remake. It's got a charm to it. Oh my. What's going to be at the top of this tower? Boobs. I mean, uh, uh, boobs. Hi, boobs. Goodbye, boobs. Angelina Jolie, is that you? How does she keep reappearing in these games? In different capacities, mind you. And the power of boners compels him. You see the most beautiful woman you have ever set eyes upon. Somehow you can feel her sadness and her intense desire to leave that place. She is a prisoner in that tower. I wasn't kidding, it's the power of boners. Did you find what you were looking for, sire? Uh, I don't want to turn around, he'll see that I've achieved my, oh, Jesus. I require my ship ready for transport, Gervain. I shall be going on a trip presently. Indeed, where shall I tell the captain you'll be heading? To Kalima, I have to find someone. I see, well. If you must go, it is my duty to ensure that you leave prepared. Arm yourself, sire. I hear Kalima is not the safe haven it once was. Of course. I shall take the sword of the first king, as is my right. A wise precaution, sire. And, uh, if I may be so brash to ask, who might you be seeking? Boobs! If all goes well, my bride. Called it. As we now change into our adventuring outfit, we seek the derriere worthy of a king. I know I'm a monster, guys. What do you expect? I mean, if you're new to the channel, I'm not sorry. 
I just, I can't be. It's who I am as a human being, which makes me a terrible person. And I accept that. But get fucked. I mean, come on. We're here to have a good time. Oh, Sister Jesus, Hedda. speaking of butt chin. How may I be at service? An opportunity has arisen, sister. I trust you so have your captive held security away. Why does that of sound like course. Dante Bosco? A bit cruel, keeping him locked away like that. Do you not think? No. How dare she flaunt her beauty in front of all to see? Her foolish male admirers see her and forget that I was the most beautiful of all in my day. Before her butt chin. In your own special way, you are still beautiful. <laughs> you devil. Mm. That is not an unfair description. Now, you mentioned a service, I believe. Yes. The king of Devontry has advised his faithful minister that he shall be departing for Kalima presently. On a quest, you might say. Really? What kind? The kind that involves sticking his neck out to rescue a damsel in distress. And what have I to do with his neck? Put simply, my dear, sever it. With your butt chin. Just stick the neck between the cheeks and just somehow make the chin go ah, and crush it. Alright, so clearly this is romancing... The stones, or Graham's quest to find someone to romance his bone. All right, let's get going. <laughs> Which is great, because day's journey oh, from hold on. <laughs> has found you by the shores of Kalima. Your ship, the Grand Thor, and its crew have deposited you and will return the day after tomorrow. Hopefully, this will give you enough time to locate and release the imprisoned woman you saw in the magic mirror. So we don't get a lot of time to figure this out. So with that said. As much as I'm making fun of the idea of, you know, King's Quest 2 being a quest for the king's giggity, um, I say it I say it lovingly because there's characters in this game that just carry through all the other King's Quests. And I and I'd be doing us a disservice to kinda, you know, like to to not to to be I wanna joke about a lot of stuff in this series. Get used to it. It's a great series, but it's got a corniness to it that I have a soft spot for, and at the same time, to... there's, I just, I can't help it. But know that I'm doing it out of my love for the game, and you know that I'm doing it from the pylon and take it with you. And part of me is doing it because I know there's going to be a couple of people out there to be like, "Oh my god, he said dick! What a monster!" And I just like fucking with people to some mild degree, and I enjoy these games, and I am enjoying them in the way that I would have enjoyed them as a kid too. Right? Don't ever want to grow up. I'm a Toys R Us kid. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. So we got ourselves a few things to look at here. Let's take a look. We've got... This is the sword of the first king of Daventry. You don't say. It dates back almost 1,000 years and has been passed down from king to king since that time. Try not to damage it. A magnificent clear crystal is embedded within its hilt. Is it the Master Sword? The fishing net is fashioned from a material that is unfamiliar to you. It is well made. It's made by the pubic hairs of a thousand mermaids. All right, let's keep moving. Get back. Get back. <laughs> All right. So we pretty much need to get our bearings a bit straight here. So we're going to follow the path. And pretty much this path is going to lead us roughly to where we kind of want to go. Taking note of things we see along the way that we will fiddle with later. It's because we don't need them now. There's no reason for us to try and just start grabbing things. It's very easy to get confused. There's actually more items in this game than there ever you could ever fathom in, in King's Quest 1. So when I said the sequel, when I say the sequel to King's Quest 1 being King's Quest 2 is going to be a lot bigger in scale and scope. I wasn't kidding. I was not kidding at all. <laughs> all right. And then let's go ahead and head up here. And what are we going to find? As we make the long walk up. 
Do 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 God, the remakes to these games are just really good. I can't stress that enough, y'all. There is a sizable hole in one of the trees. Let's check out that tree hole. When you peer into the hole of the pine tree, you see a mallet lying there. You pick it up and take it with you. Uh, sweet. The head of the mallet is made of iron. It has a long wooden handle. Cure. Let's keep moving. And we'll go over here. Hey! What? Who said that? I did. Huh? I'm down here, in the hay. Oh. Well, who are you? My name is... Uh... Um... Yes? Hmm. I can't seem to remember. <laughs> <laughs> You've been doing a lot of drugs. Well then, what are you? Oh, I'm a... Um... Uh... Yes? Hmm. Can't seem to remember that either. Well, what are you doing in this haystack? That's easy! Ten lines of coke! I was looking for... Oh. Um... You can't remember? No. Sorry. How long have you been in there? Let's see. It couldn't be longer than... Uh... Yes? <laughs> three? Maybe four weeks? Weeks? Yep. Eating my fingers! <laughs> Pardon me for saying, but you sound as if you have a bit of a cold. Yes! It's all this hay! It's giving me hay fever! <laughs> oh dear god. It's, it's that bad, y'all. We're in some we're in some pretty serious trouble. All right, let's go ahead and let him be for the time being. You see a man bending over the fountain. He appears to be trying to retrieve something from it. What could it be? It's a bit weird. A tall statue of a man stands prominently at the entrance of town. It looks to have been placed here quite a number of years ago. The statue bears a plaque which reads, Count Kaldor, ruler and protector of Kalima. Sounds like an interesting fellow. Well, who's this guy? Greetings, merchant. Ah, to you, good day. Aww. A visitor arrived new, no? A sense I possess for these things? Need you have for my wares of great specialty? Perhaps. But first, I'm curious. Where did you come by such a pumpkin? Eyes quite keen have you. Indeed, a specimen unique it is. Mama, me want Mama. Oh, poor little guy. Be quiet. Hey, where is it? Speech among plants so rare, yes? Quite so. Are you planning to sell it? Sell? Never would I sell such a thing as this. It'll make me incredibly ri- Uh... I mean, entrusted it was to my care. Watch over it, I must. Mama, take me back to my mama! Forget it. I'm not taking you back to that patch. So pipe down. Pardon? Ah, of importance I speak not. Trouble to your ears I meant none. Well, I don't know about you guys, but that's some pretty shady shit. We'll be dealing with that in due course, of course. But right now, we we have some other things we'll be taking care of. But we're going to get that started while we're... we're there. Ooh. What a pretty nice library. May I help you? Oh. Yes. I was hoping to enrich my knowledge of this fair land by way of perusing your historical texts. My, that was well put. It was, yeah. I thought. Not terribly effective, though. It's a fucking library, lady. Come on. Um, pardon me. Got my crown. Perhaps I was not clear. A crown. You were. Then may I? A crown. No. Why can't I? My crown. You are not. <laughs> 
a member. Well then, can I become a member? A crown. No. Why can I not become a member? We already have far too many members. It's difficult to keep track of everything. How many members are there? Two. Two. If I may inquire, who are your two members? You may not. Neither the Count of Kalima nor the elderly gentleman who lives next door would approve of my divulging that information to you. Ah, thank you anyway. What a bitch. You mentioned that the Count of Kalima is a member of this library. Yes. Have you seen him recently? The librarian looks at you strangely. No. Is there any way I might meet the Count? Yes. How? Die. Uh. I would have to die to meet the Count? Depends. On what? Your importance. And if I am important? Then you might be fortunate enough to be buried on his estate. Who's buried on the Count's estate? Counts! Aha. Uh -huh. Past Counts, of course. Anyone else? Yes! Who? Him! Pardon? Do you mean the Count is dead? The librarian decides to avoid your gaze and seems disinclined to speak further with you on the subject. Like the bitch knows everything, it just won't tell us. The librarian seems disinclined to speak further with you. All right, well, we got as much information as we need. Now, in, unlike King's Quest 1, there's a lot more story involved in this and a lot of story that the, re the remake has added. So just keep that in mind that some of these discussions with characters are a bit lengthy compared to the original, which some f figure is a good thing or there a bad thing, depending on it. On the door. Some people thought that was a bad thing. I think it's fine. I like games with more story, the to be honest with you. The door is plain and has a mail slot. It also has a sign posted on it. You read it. The family of the deceased wishes to thank all who have expressed their condolences over the passing of their loved one, Frederick. Frederick enjoyed life and literature and had an ever-present, if sometimes wicked, sense of humor. May his soul be at peace in the realm of the dead, and may its eternal may its lord judge him worthy of eternal happiness. You also notice something sticking out from under the door. You are unable to retrieve any- Okay, so what we'll do is we'll take our sword. Making sure that no one is watching, you slide your thin blade under the door and draw out what appears to be a letter. And then we will take the letter. You open the letter and read it. Dear applicant, please find and close the library membership card to which you are now entitled. The five-year application process has concluded, and we are pleased to inform you that your status as a member of the town library is confirmed. Welcome to an exclusive group of patrons. Yours sincerely, Town Librarian. P.S. Please sign your name on the card to ensure validation. Damn. So it looks like five-year application process just to get into a library. And I know some of you have never even been in a library. Some of the younger, young, you younger viewers, you know, the 18 to 25 year olds probably never been in a library quite a shame Okay, so what we need to do is kind of move our way up here And while psycho lady's not looking yoink you quickly grab the quill while the librarian isn't looking and sign your name on the blank library card Place the quill before the librarian notices it missing And then now it's signed It says I believe Graham on it Will you accept this? Yes! You are younger than I expected. Uh, I eat well and get a lot of exercise. I see. So, what do I do now? Borrow. You mean I can take books from this library? No. Oh. And then what we do is we then talk to her? Yes? Could you recommend a good book? Oh god, there she goes. Waddle, waddle, waddle. This book is entitled, Kalima, Perfect One Day, Better the Next. Browsing through it, you notice an interesting excerpt. Kalima, Perfect One Day, Better the Next. If you are considered traveling the, to the wondrous land of Kalima, then you should be congratulated on your timing, for indeed it has changed much since creation many years ago. The very occasional earthquake has altered the land to the east somewhat, 
creating deep chasms near the mountainside. The changing ocean levels in this region have caused an alteration in the shape of the coastline, and, of course, the people themselves have relocated from where they once lived. Most now reside in the town, which is nestled in a, the safety of the mountains, a wise decision, for more than a few have claimed to hear the sounds of howling at night, a sign that many wild animals have moved into Weirwood Forest in recent times. As a result, few venture past the town gates, especially after dark. This isolation and the relative sake, uh, scarcity of people throughout most of the realm has made Kalima a haven for the tourist who for the tourist who wishes to soak up the natural atmosphere of the land. It has also made it it has it has also made a significant convenience for those who have settled in Kalima far from the town and wish to maintain their privacy to pursue their own ambitions in peace. The realm of Kalima is a wondrous land of beauty and for the adventurer among you danger. For the adventurous among you danger. See also guidebook to the land of the green isle. Okay, well, that gave us a little bit of information, though it didn't give us much. We kind of know the layout, so to speak, of, of the land. And with that, we have now some progress that we can technically make. Let's go ahead and head out of town here, as there's really nothing else that we can do right now of any major merit. We've got a few ideas of things that we can, fit, you know, fiddle with, so to speak, for lack of a better term. <laughs> So let's go ahead and head all the way back to where the town sign is. This is going to be a road we traverse a lot. That town's going to be a place we, we use as kind of a hub of where to go. And sometimes, uh, but unlike King's Quest 1, the world doesn't recycle itself. So if you go too far in one direction, eventually you'll be forced to stop. Because you'll either die trying to move forward or you just can't. It's as simple as that. All right, let's head up this way. Well, hey, there's a pumpkin patch. Mm, let's take you a look. look for a nice, large pumpkin to take from the patch. Daddy needs a pumpkin pie. Hey, watch it! <laughs> oh, no. Oh, sorry, I was not aware you could talk. I like this Likewise. kind of stuff. Anyway, be careful where you're treading. You're spoiling the good soil by standing so close. And I got eight kids to feed. You glance at the smaller pumpkins. These must be her children. I only count seven. Yeah, well, I had eight. Then some strange man who spoke even stranger came by. He claimed to be a hort... a hort... a... a horticul... claimed to know a bit about plants. I let him take a look at my little darlings. Anyway, before I knew it, he'd gone and pinch one of my babies. Took off towards the town, he did. Of all the knife. Just because we're plants doesn't mean we don't deserve any respect. I am sure that is true. It's weird. It's like Cockney and like the lady from frickin' Ghostbusters, the receptionist. Janine. Like those two accents all rolled into one. It's weird. Pardon me for asking, <laughs> but how did you come by the ability to talk? With a question like that, I'm sure, yeah, Mouse. I was only. I don't take it personal. That old witch <laughs> had to cast a spell on me so I could guide her precious possessions. Hagatha? Yeah, she's the old bag who lives in the cave to the west. You know her type. Green warts, pointed ears, cannibalistic, doesn't bring her trash out. Just your stereotypical evil old crowd. <laughs> hmm. She sounds pleasant. You mentioned something about guarding Hagatha's precious possessions. At least, what she considers precious. I reckon they're anything but. Mind you, I have my doubts about Hagatha's legitimate ownership of this stuff, if you know what I mean. What sorts of items does Hagatha wish you to guard? Oh, uh, the usual vanities. All useless in my opinion. But what would I know? Okay, so we get a little bit of information, but definitely not a whole lot. <laughs> but we know about Hagatha, we know about the town, we know that this magical pumpkin 
thing needs, needs help of some sort. Almost sounds like it's voiced by like a weird Adam Sandler impression. So with that said, I want to thank you guys for stopping by. Like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff. Check out my Twitch channel, twitch.tv. So check our studios for more live gaming action because when we come back, we still got more of this land that we should just really explore, not just to build up our inventory, but to build up trust among the people here and also solve a few problems that would give us some other goodies that we probably want too. So with that said, Thanks for stopping by, guys, and we're going to see you guys next time.